Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I speed match locomotives using the scale mile per hour method. So I spent the last week speed matching my CN fleet using the scale mile per hour method. I've got them all done except for one I saved. Uh, we're going to do that one step by step and I'll show you how I speed match the, my locomotives. So I'll get all these uh, out of the way and grab the one we're going to speed match and we'll get started. The way I uh, speed match my locomotives is slightly different than other people that use this scale mile per hour method. And that is, I uh, use the speed tunnel to tune them so that uh, when I'm going one on the throttle, I'm going one mile per hour or as close as I can get it. And then I speed match at 10, so 10 equals 10 and so on. And I go up, I go uh, 20, 30, 40 and then uh, cap them all at 40. So the advantages and disadvantages of the speed matching using this method um, like I talked about uh, achieving the scale speeds uh, adding to the realism probably the biggest advantage I think uh, being able to have that realistic speed but just knowing that the train is doing a certain speed that you were telling it to do I think that really will add to the realism and to the operating like uh, some opportunities for that would be uh, obeying signal indications, you could have uh, trackside flags, slow orders, stuff like that. And the other advantage is uh, having the t speed tunnel, you can test uh, a baseline speed that when you get the locomotive and kind of, then you know what the different manufacturers are doing. The disadvantages are it's more expensive than the golden locomotive method just because you have to buy the speed tunnel. And uh, if you do it the way I do it, you have less control, less fine control of the speed. So basically, uh, one click on the throttle is a larger increase in speed than on the if you would use um, all 28 speed steps. Because I'm only using um, one to 12. So we'll get into the uh, some of the technical end of how I accomplish the speed matching using 40 as the top speed. So. Um, Digitrax DCC system has 99 throttle positions and everyone always uses or most people will use the 28 uh, speed step programming so that means you have 99 divided by 28 equals you have 3.5 throttle positions per speed step so that works out to speed step 2 and 3 are your 10 mile an hour adjustment Speed step 5 and 6 are your 20, 8 and 9 is your 30 mile per hour adjustment, and 11 and 12 is your 40. So what that means is the curve ends up looking something like this. So you, rather than uh, the out of the box settings that most locomotives come with where it's just a straight line right across to the 28, mine have a curve that kind of climbs quicker goes up to 40 whatever I find that to be on the locomotive and then I just match it all the way across. All my locomotives have a, a curve that looks something like this. Some of them you have to really crank it up and other ones not so much. So That's the uh, technical breakdown of how that works. And uh, when you ask why would you govern them at 40 why not faster because trains in real life can you know 50, 60 um, actually, if you test using the speed tunnel as a baseline and testing all these locomotives from manufacturers, like the average speed is actually about 40. There's a few that can go fa quite a bit faster, like in you know, Intermountains or Geared. I think I had one Intermountain that could do 53 miles per hour. The old yellow box Atherin Genesis, it uh, clocked in at 76 miles per hour, which is just absolutely insane. You don't really need to go that fast. so. I found 40 just because most of the locomotives do 40 anyway and, and in reality we're not running our trains much faster than 40 scale miles per hour. Uh, so if you have kids or other operators running your stuff, um, so now on mine, take the train up to 40, which is uh, pretty looks pretty fast when you have a big train. When you have just a single locomotive it doesn't look very fast, but uh, if you have a big train going 40 scale mile per hour, it's pretty quick. So uh, on my throttles now, when you get to 40, they can crank it all the way up to 99. 
and the locomotive speed won't change. It'll just stay at 40 miles per hour, which I think is a good thing if you want to, you know, you can let kids run your trains and stuff and they won't take them up to 50, 60 and uh, maybe run into issues with that. So, uh, yeah, that's another uh, bonus to doing it this method. It's kind of governing everything at 40. All right, to speed match a locomotive using this method, you're going to need a place to run it, like a layout or a loop or something. Uh, preferably with a piece of straight track because uh, locomotives kind of perform the best uh, on a piece of straight track. So if you're on a curve, you might be skewing uh, the speeds a bit if there's a little bit of resistance. So I use that. Uh, it's like the only piece of straight track. It's about three feet long there on my layout right by the road crossing. And that's where I uh, set up my speed tunnel. So you'll need... Uh, some kind of a DCC system, obviously. Uh, I use Digitrax, so not sure. You could use this method on any other system that uses, you know, speed steps. So, I mean, I think NCE is kind of the same idea. Not sure how many speed steps it has, but uh, you could make it work for anything. You'll need a computer and an interface with some kind, with some ability to run uh, Decoder Pro uh, JMRI. You'll need a speed tunnel, obviously, and I use the. Uh, AccuTrack 2 speedometer by MRT. Uh, it was 60, 65 bucks. And uh, I think it's been worth it because I like uh, testing locomotives when they come from the manufacturer and gives you a good baseline of what everybody's doing and, and what their locomotives are geared like. And the last thing you'll need is uh, the old handy notebook and a pencil to uh, write down all the information about the speed table and uh, kind of your progress as you go. So this is what my setup looks like when I'm speed matching. I got my stool there, um, I got the, the throttle within reach, um, my local buffer USB that connects my laptop to the layout, my laptop and a spot for my all important notepad. And uh, it is kind of important to set this up, make it comfortable because sometimes um, if you're doing a bunch of the same locomotive, it could be quick. It can be like 20 minutes per locomotive. But if you're doing a bunch of different manufacturers and you're running into problems, it can take upwards of 40 minutes to an hour to do one locomotive. So it's good to have a comfy place to work. All right, so we'll uh, we'll start speed matching this guy. Um, I picked this one because it's uh, pretty common. It's an Athern Genesis with a uh, soundtrack tsunami and probably the most comfortable uh, doing these, speed matching these ones. I've did quite a few so I kinda know what the, what the decoders are like. So this is one I picked to show you guys. So the first thing we gotta do is run it in and uh, get it warmed up. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, got your layout or your or um, your circle track or whatever. You're just gonna crank them up to 99 and let them go. So all my locomotives, they're all pretty well traveled. I've run them all a lot. So this step usually takes about 10 to 20 minutes before I see the, them kind of max out at their top speed. And what I'll do is I'll wait till I get three consecutive uh, speed tests of the same. And it usually takes, like I said, 10, 20 minutes. Uh, if you had a brand new locomotive out of the box, I probably wouldn't recommend speed matching it right away. I'd, uh, I'd run it in, let it you know, run a few trains with it and stuff and break it in a bit. They do uh, increase in speed as the motor warms up and as the gears kind of get worn a bit, worn in a bit. So this is uh, there's a couple things we can do while this is going on. So we'll uh, start our page in the notebook and get the JMRI set up. So this is what I start with in my notebook. Um, here's the throttle settings, and this is for the base, the chart for the baseline. So I'll test it after it's broken. I'll test it forward and reverse at all these speed steps and write them down, that gives me the baseline. And then beside it, when I start speed matching, I'll write as I'm testing. So when we're done, it'll look something like this. Here were the baseline tests on this uh, SD60F I did. And here, here's me speed matching. And I just write these numbers in lightly as I go and test. And as I make changes, I get closer and closer to my targets. And then you can see now, step one, I got 1.9, uh, 10, 21, 32. I try to be within one mile per hour. and. Uh, if I'm there, I'm happy because usually when you put a train on it, they'll smooth out. So you could spend a lot of time trying to get them 100% perfect, but uh, it's up to you how close you want to get. I go within, try to be within one mile an hour if I can. 
So uh, while that locomotive continues to break in, we can make a new uh, roster ID for it. So I'll add a new loco, soundtracks, tsunami. It's a tsunami diesel, and it's a GN, I believe. Yeah, there it is, GN for Atherin Genesis, and it's this uh, EN EMD 710. This particular one. All my locomotives have been changed to the road number on the side and you gotta give it an ID 8013 okay save now he's in the roster and we can grab it and get ready to program so we gotta make sure we have the uh, speed tunnel set up for HO scale and uh, miles per hour so just a note uh, when you're starting t as well I always make sure that uh, acceleration and deceleration are at zero because it's just a pain in the butt because you got to run these forward and reverse many many times over and if you're sitting there waiting for it to accelerate and decelerate you're gonna get fed up really quick I also make sure the forward and reverse trim is set at 128 and 128 I'll show you where that is in the JMRI so acceleration and deceleration is under the motor tab right here just make sure those are at zero and the uh, forward and reverse trim are under the speed table here I'm going to make sure these are at 128 and 128 okay so the locomotive has been running for about 10-15 minutes I'm going to reading a 49 miles scale miles per hour that time so we'll, uh, we'll keep them going here a few more times and if we get three in a row we can be certain that it's pretty close to the top speed and we can uh, start speed matching. There's another 49. Okay, that's the third time we've gotten 49 miles an hour. I think we've reached our top speed. The motor's nice and warm. So we'll call that our uh, our top speed for the baseline. So we'll go 49 in here, then we'll run it through in reverse. And 47. So the next thing we'll do is uh, test it at 50. So it's noticeably slower there. So we'll pencil in the book 33, hit reverse, so that's a good sign, uh, forward and reverse speeds are similar. So now we'll drop it down to 40 on the throttle and run it through again. We'll do this for the rest of that table and get our all our baseline numbers. So there we got 29. All right, 29. Hit reverse. So you can see why if you had acceleration and deceleration on, this would be painful. 28. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, test it at the rest of these speeds, and I'll get back to you guys when I have the full table done. Okay, so. I got the table just about done. I'm doing the low speed now, which I always target one mile an hour. And you can see that uh, it's unstable at throttle setting one. And uh, we don't want that. Even though it's, uh, it is one mile an hour, we don't want that un unrealistic jerking motion like that. So I'm just gonna call that uh, zero because uh, it's no use if it jerks like that and doesn't look good so test it forward see what the forward one mile an hour looks like same thing so we're gonna have to increase the voltage so same so I will write I'll write one mile an hour in there but I just leave a note for myself that it's jerky at that low speed step so we'll at the at the first one we'll have to turn that up a little bit and uh, until we get nice smooth slow speed okay so now that we got our baseline we can uh, start speed matching. 
So now that we've got our baseline of this locomotive, we can kind of see what the speed table is going to need to look like. So if my, these are my targets, and if this is what the actuals are, you can see that this locomotive is going to run terribly with my other ones. It's too slow on the slow end here. 5 miles an hour, 3 miles an hour, too slow. 7 miles an hour, too slow at 30. 11 at 40 and then you get up to 99 and then it's too fast so it's just way off so like we talked about um, using the whiteboard there this is speed steps 2 and 3 this is 5 and 6 this is 8 and 9 this is 11 and 12 and that's the top so these are the ones we need to adjust if you haven't done one of these types or brands of locomotives yet you've got to kind of just guess and I have figured out after doing a bunch of these that it's roughly, very roughly, four steps per mile, one mile an hour is kind of roughly what it is. So, so we're going to go ahead and use the speed table, user defined. We know that it's jerky at uh, one mile an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and increase that by one. We know we're two and a half, about, well, two miles an hour slow at... Uh, speed step 2 and 3 so we're going to increase that by 8 and then that one just kind of goes accordingly and we know at 20 we're 5 so 5 times 4 we'll increase this one by 20 and these ones kind of follow suit Okay, so this is, uh, here's 8 and 9, which is our 30 mile an hour adjustment. So we're 8 miles an hour slow there at the 30 mark, so we're going to go up by 32 on this one. Same on 9. Twelve too short, so I'm just going to kind of guess here based on what this curve's looking like, and then we'll bring these down because the twelve is our maximum to sorry right here. So we'll try this and see what happens. Alright, so now it's just a case of trial and error. So I'll crank it up to 99 again. And we'll start testing. And usually I'll do the top end first, so I want to make sure I get that, uh, that 99 right. So we saw there it was 45. That's an improvement, but we're still too fast. 44 and 45. So now is when I start just putting light pencil marks beside it. That was our last test, 44 and 45. So we're 5 miles an hour too fast on the top end, so we're going to drop these down by 20. And we will drop 11, 10 a little bit, see where this gets us. Okay, crank the throttle back up to 99 and we'll see what we get here. 44. Forty-six. Still too fast, so we're gonna do the same thing over again, drop it down. There we're getting closer now. Forty-one. Forty-three, so we'll go a little bit more and call that good. Forty, perfect. That's what we're looking for. So it's forty-two and forward and forty in reverse. That's okay. I'm usually as long as one of them is good, I leave it. So we'll test at 50, 40, perfect. We 
This is at 50 again, 42. Okay, we were expecting that, that's good. You can see in the book, I'm writing it in on the side here just lately. Those are the actual tests. I've got the throttle at 40, and we're gonna keep testing. 41 going forward at 40, that's perfect. We're right on the money. in reverse. Okay. Drop the throttle down to 30 and we'll see where we're at. Thirty-five going forward. Thirty-four. Okay, so we're too fast on that one, but we'll wait till we get all the numbers to make adjustments. Here's twenty and we're twenty-one. Reverse, same, 21, that's good. Really close. Sometimes you get lucky and you only have to do this a couple times and other times you end up doing this a lot. So here's 10 mile an hour and I can tell that that's probably pretty close. 7.6. Okay, we'll test it in reverse now. Seven point eight. Okay, and we'll just have a look at our slow speed, one mile an hour, and see what it looks like now. And we've got no movement at all at one, so we know we need to go up a couple more notches. Okay, so so based on those tests that we just did, I just wrote all in lightly in pencil here, so that they can be erased as I adjust them. This is good. I I would call this good. It's within one mile at 40 there. That's pretty good. So then at 30, we're five miles an hour too fast. At 20, we're one mile an hour too fast. And at 10, we're about two miles an hour too slow. And at one, we're at no movement at all. So we still got to go up there at speed step one. So what we're going to do is adjust that table accordingly using that baseline of four four steps per mile per hour. So I'm going to go take this up to two because we want to keep that uh, that low that slowest speed step as low as possible while getting uh, smooth movement at the same time. And we're so we need two here so I'm going to go up by eight. And then I usually just split the difference, so I'll move this one up by four, because it's kind of in between. This is 10 miles an hour, and this is 20. So we're one mile an hour too fast at 20, so we're going to drop these by four. Same thing, split the difference. Go two there. And uh, this is eight. Eight and nine is our 30 mile an hour adjustment, so we're we're five too fast. We're going to drop these by 20. We'll drop this by 10 to split the difference. And maybe we'll go a couple on this one just to kind of make the curve smooth. So like, as you can see, it's a guessing game. You're just going back and forth between the speed tunnel and making adjustments on this uh, speed table here. So now we'll go ahead and run another set of tests. So that was at 40, 40 and 39. Here's at 30. Oh, that was lucky. 30 right on the money. And 31 going forward, but we'll call that good. Because that's within my, my tolerance of one mile an hour. Drop it down to 20. Oh, we slowed down a bit there. So we're going to go up, maybe we'll go up slightly on that one. 19 in reverse. And 19 going forward, so like I said, I have my little 
testing slot here. I'll write that in there, 19, just lightly. We'll drop down to 10, see where we're at. Nine point nine, which is awesome. So I'm going to erase my previous test numbers, and I'll go nine point nine. Test it going forward. Final test is uh, speed step one. Still no movement, so we got to make a change there. But we're getting very close to having this thing speed match. One thing I like to do is uh, put little check marks when I when I get the speed correct. I'll just put little light check marks there that tell me I don't have to adjust it anymore. So this final round of adjustments, we know we need to make this higher so we can get our slow, smooth speed. And since these are both below by one, I'll adjust those up and get it closer to 20. So on our one mile an hour step, we'll go up by one again. I'm just going to increase this by, we'll say three this time and see what happens. So since our tests were good at all the other speed steps besides our 20 mile and our one mile an hour, I'm only going to test 20 and one this time. There's 20. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. That's exactly where we want it to be. And that's good that it runs the same speed forward and reverse. Not all locomotives uh, are like that. Sometimes you have big gaps. So here's one mile an hour. Too, still too slow. We're not moving. So I'm going to go up one more notch on that. Still no movement. Okay, we'll go one more time. Should be getting close here. Remember, we started at zero and on speed step one. Now we're up to six. One point five. So I had to do that quite a few more times. Um, ended up having to go all the way from zero up to fifteen. But it's best to still do that in one step per move because you want to keep this as low as possible. One point five is still pretty acceptable. I, that's not bad. I'm happy with that. So now, guys, we're pretty much we're pretty much done. This thing is uh, speed match. So what I'll do is test it one more time. Um, at every speed and just double check to make sure I don't need to make any more changes while we're waiting there you can see the speeds are getting to close to be where I want them and 1.5 in reverse so that's awesome consider that step done 1.5 now we'll test the uh, rest of the speed. So here's 10. Nine point nine. That's awesome. Nine point eight in reverse. Right where we want it to be. Okay, we'll go up to 20. Twenty on the nose. Twenty in reverse. Awesome. There's thirty. Thirty-one. That's acceptable. 
See, so we're at 30 there. Test it in reverse, see what we get. And 30, so we'll leave that because it's within one mile. Okay, we'll go up to our top speed of 40. Forty, see, perfect. And in reverse. Thirty-nine in reverse. So here's fifty. And we're going forty in reverse, that's good. Forty two and forward. See, it's starting to drift a little bit there, but that's okay. You can deal with that. And 40 in reverse at 99. 42 going forward. Okay. All right, so you wanna make sure you save this. That's very important. Actually, you should probably be saving this as you go. I forgot about that, but uh, that's pretty important because if you shut your computer off or forget about it or close the window accidentally, um, it will not save your changes and you'll be starting from scratch. So the final step, now you can see um, that's what the table looks like. We're nice and accurate. So the final thing I do is actually physically write down the speed table just in case I ever, my computer crashes or I lose the files for some reason, um, which happens with JMRI, if you uh, reinstall it and delete everything and then reinstall it, you can lose all your locomotive files. So go ahead and write those down. So here's what the page looks like uh, when it's all finished and the speed matched up. You can see the tables written down there the 1 to 12 speed steps and then I just write put a dash 175 to 175 there you can see that's just replicating that so that's a wrap guys this locomotive is all speed matched up and uh, ready to go haul some freight on my layout because I speed matched it with the speed tunnel I don't even need to test it with the other locomotives I know that it's gonna run well with all the other ones that I've speed matched so what I'll do is uh, at the end of the video, I'll show all the pages of the locomotives I've speed matched so that you guys can use the speed tables at the bottom as a baseline for when you're starting to speed match your own locomotives. And uh, they won't be exact. No two locomotives are the same. I speed matched four Intermountain SD40-2Ws and I got four different speed tables. But you can use it as a base and it'll get you close to start and uh, save you some time. All right, guys. That wraps up this uh, video on how I speed match locomotives using the scale mile per hour method.